My last and final artifact is my literary lenses artifact. So the part of my thesis that this connects to is um, my ability to think critically by analyzing complex ideologies. So the essential questions for um, Ms. Lantos's unit three was, is there ever one truth? How can we understand perspectives different from our own? And how does liter literary lenses allow us to analyze text in multiple ways? So the process I went through in completing this project was um, Ms. Lantos first introduced us to five different literary lenses. So we had reader response, we had the feminist lens, Marxist lens, psychoanalytical, and post-colonial lenses. In order to familiarize ourselves with these lenses, we did a lot of practice. So we looked at poems and analyzed them through feminist lenses and um, psychoanalytical lenses. And then through different lenses, we looked at questions that these um, yeah, these lenses focus on. So like a feminist lens, what they focus on um, the, the oppression of women and how men are um, highlighted throughout our society. And um, a psychoanalytical a psychoanalytical lens focuses on like family dynamics and your past and the way that your mind functions, those type of things. And we also looked at short stories and did some posters and things. Make sure we got it down packed before we started the actual project. Next, Ms. Lantos introduced the essay to us. So we did a little background on African history because the author of the book, Chinua Achibe, is an African author. And we started reading the book. And the book is entitled a, a Man of the People. So the psychologist picked the psychoanalytical lens. And um, here is my thesis. If the psychoanalytical theory created by Sigmund Freud that highlights the importance of a healthy mother and son relationship is true, then Odile's behavior can be explained through this theory. Odile is the main character in the book. And by Freud's psychosexual theory, I mean that he thought that every, that every life has a form of stages. There was five different stages. There was an oral phase. There was an anal stage, a philic stage. There was a, a, a latent a latent period and general stage. <sighs> okay, he basically felt that um, these different stages um, outlined a person's life. And when something went wrong in these stages, um, a person became fixated on that event. And that causes like certain problems. So like in the oral stage is when the kid or an infant is obsessed with their mouth. That's how they communicate. And when something is wrong with that, it affects them in the future. So like they might bite, they bite their nails or like really like to eat or always bite their lips or certain things like that. And after we created a thesis on our claims, we found evidence. And then we created an outline and typed up our essay and turned it in. And then after we did that, um, we had to check it ourselves. So make the revisions that our peers in Ms. Lantos gave us and to um, keep revising until they got up to proficiency. So the leadership skill that I highlighted in this artifact is thinking critically. I had to analyze the behaviors through the psychoanalytical lens, connect the behaviors to the pattern, so to Freud's psychosexuality theory. And then I applied the findings so, to my essay, so um, my knowledge of Freud's theories and of the book, and created my final essay. So in my career, I will have to identify, take time to actually study that person, identify where they struggle and how I can help them. I will also have to analyze their behaviors after I identify the certain things that they do, pick up patterns and those type of things, and accurately evaluate them before I diagnose them or give them any type of medicine and those type of things. Questions. <laughs> so you clearly explained that you use the psychoanalytical lens to analyze this text. Mm -hmm. Will you give us a specific example of something from the the um, novel mm -hmm. that you use your this lens to analyze and like how that changed your perspective? Of what was going on? Okay. So um, the main character Odile, um, his mother died while giving childbirth to him. And so um, there is, um, Freud has theories that says that at a, there's a stage that a kid goes through where he, the kid feels like their mother is all that they need and they are all their mother need. And it's called, um, like they're fascinated with their mom. That's the thing that happens. Odile never got to experience that with his own mother because of the fact that she passed away during childbirth. So from there, I took that, that was the, the base, the core, that started his behavior throughout the rest of the book. So throughout the rest of the book, he's like very promiscuous and um, sometimes disrespectful to women. And I, I 
took that and analyzed it as saying that he never really had that connection at, to begin with, with his mom, that um, led him to go in the direction that he went when it came to building relationships with, with women. And um, he just did it in the wrong way. He did it in a sexual way instead of in a, a way that you're supposed to build a relationship with a woman. Do you find yourself using any of these lenses yeah. in the real world? Yes. And if so, sort of which ones do you find compelling and how? I didn't really consider myself a feminist at first. I became a lot more defensive with guys. I try. I I just I don't know. It's kind of overboard now. I don't ever think that they're try. They're consider us equals anymore. I always feel like guys think they're dominant to me. I use the Marxist lens. So the Marxist lens focuses on like power and money and who has it basically. And um, that lens it helps me out a lot in government class and it makes me question like a lot more things. So now me and Nuda have conversations about like our government and how corrupt it is and uh, changes that need to be made. Nuda should run for president. <laughs> she should. Um, just a reminder why I'm giving this defense is to defend my thinking through my work. Um, I also want to show growth over time, so from the beginning of high school until now, and to reflect on some strengths and areas of growth that I still need to work on. Um, so a recap on my thesis, I said that education is important to me as an aspiring psychologist because it allows people to broaden their minds and expand their thought processes. And my WLE um, I showed my critical thinking skills and my communicating power, my powerful communication skills. Um, projectile motion, I highlighted my ability to effectively complete projects and to collaborate productively with the people around me. And literary lenses also highlighted my ability to think critically, but this time by analyzing uh, ideologies. So although I've succeeded in a lot of areas, I still have places, areas that I need to grow in. So to start off, um, procrastination. I said this in the beginning. Um, I'm not good at managing my time. So the brilliant plan that I came up with was to get these big old calendars that like my teachers and stuff have and to put everything on there. So like class schedules, um, test dates, practice schedules, anything, time, like meeting with friends, other type of things so that I, I make sure that um, I get it done and make sure that I hold myself to it. I also, um, to, to make this a little more concrete, I plan on like um, penalizing myself. So like if I don't stick to my study schedule or something, I can't like go out that weekend or something. Or I can't do, this depends on what's going on at that time. I have to take away something um, to penalize myself for not keeping up with my own schedule. Also my emotional stability. Um, I've been working on this. Um, I attend counseling and anger management once a week, and I plan to continue this when I do get into college because um, at Dominguez Hills they have this, they offer it. So I'm going to utilize it and take advantage of it and continue to work, work, on, work on myself and work on my anger. Um, I also need to work on taking on too much, too many tasks at one time. So I don't like to disappoint people. So when they ask for something, I find myself saying yes. Um, but it usually ends up stressing me out in the end. So I plan to use my big old calendar to make sure I schedule in time to take for myself. Make sure that I don't um, consume myself with too many responsibilities that I know I can't um, handle mentally. So those are some plans. I also wanted to talk a bit about how this connects to my family dynamics. I spoke in my thesis about how um, I want to bridge a gap between myself and my family. Um, just a little background, my family doesn't really take education as important as um, seriously as I do. Um, after you reach a certain grade, it kind of becomes an option whether or not you go to school. And, um, and to me, I feel like it is very essential to life. So I hope that by me um, actually graduating high school and being so passionate about attending college and breaking that cycle and not being so stuck inside of Oakland and like what my family focuses on, which is like respect and like the money and those are things that are more important to them than an actual education. I just hope that through me putting in the effort to do better, they can see that there's so much more to life than the things that they're focusing on. So many, so much better things that they can accomplish without being trapped inside of a city. I have younger siblings, three younger siblings, 
and m my younger sister has a learning disorder. She's kind of already given up on school. So I feel like once I graduate and go into college, I can show her that they're, she's just like me. Like she's like a little version of me. She can do it too. Like these are my next steps. I really want to go to college, not just for, I feel like going to college not, doesn't just benefit me. It benefits my entire family and the people around me. And I also want to continue to grow as a learner and a person. I feel like you can never learn too much. You can always be educated. You learn new things every day, whether it's minor or life changing. And I want to be a better person. Like at the end of the day, there's always things that I can work on on myself instead of um. Even though I'll, I'll, work, I'll work on other people, I don't. Gosh, I do want to be a better person. But at the end of the day, um. And I want to be that exception to what people expect my family to amount to. So, thanks. <laughs>I eventually do want to move back up here like when I do start my own child psychology firm I want it to be up here based in Oakland and um, just so that like just to show my family like there's different things you can do inside of Oakland instead of the same routine every day that doesn't really necessarily get them anywhere like they never grow they just stay in the same stop because they don't try to expand so eventually I do want to come back up here after I complete my four years and get my PhD and come back and start my psychology firm, it will eventually be a chain. You'll see my face somewhere. If you could talk to yourself a month ago, how would you, what would you tell yourself and what would you do differently in order to manage this project and not, uh, better and not procrastinate? Um, right before this project, like before making the keynote and the visual and things like that, there was like some family events that really messed with my mind. So I started to get um, discouraged and I didn't really want to do this anymore. I was kind of giving up. I, pro I probably would have told myself that. I would have told myself that my family doesn't define who I am as a person. There's a whole lot more to, to myself than the the screw-ups of my family. My mom basically told me that everything that's happened in the past was because of me, because I let, I never came back to the house after she kicked me out. But um, I really took that to heart, you know, because there's a lot going on with every individual ever since that event. And I started to believe it. I started to feel like I had to focus more on getting my siblings mine right than getting myself together. And, but then eventually I figured it out late, of course, that um, if I, gra I have to graduate to show them that they can go somewhere. And if I don't pass this, I can't graduate. So it kind of became, it did become crunch time. And um, I got it together eventually, but I probably would have told myself that my family doesn't define who I am as a person. These days I see more stress than mm -hmm. ever. Um, and I want that may be sort of the evolution of yeah. how you're developing. I wonder if you have some thoughts about how you're going to deal with that when you move away from home. There's, I feel like this is a, a big turning point in my life. So there's going to be a lot of stress because there's a lot on the line. So. Accepting that I think will, will help me get through the stresses of colleges because I feel like in order for me to get to where I want to go I have to get through these type of things. So instead of me getting angry and shutting down and all those type of things um, I have to push through it. like I have to complete it. I can't I Can't just fall and crack under pressure. So um, I think it's all about mindset to be honest when I go to college it's all about keeping a, a, a positive mindset and remem remembering why I'm there and the bigger picture, the bigger goal of what I'm trying to accomplish. Are there little things that you can do to like take care of yourself? Yeah. That you so I go running, I go running. I like to run, I figure that out. I listen to music. I eat a lot, which probably isn't healthy, but I eat the way you stress. I talk more now. I used to didn't speak. I felt like I don't know, it was a sign of weakness, showing everybody what I was worried about. 
my friends have a lot of different personalities, so like when I talk to them, I get a lot of different things back, and it helps. Like either if it's funny, and it doesn't make sense, or <laughs> if it's like it's it's real tips, like things that I can do. So I speak now instead of holding it in, bottling it up, and building it up over time, and that helps a lot too. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, yeah.